hello everyone in this pre presentation we are going to learn about stem cells and regenerative uh, medicine so what is stem cell research and what is the purpose of studying stem cells well stem cell research helps us understand more about development aging and disease to do this work scientists look to create experimental model systems which resemble normal processes in order to learn more about how stem cells change across the lifespan either in the process of growth in early life or the degeneration of tissues later in life by using model systems like studying heart muscle cells beating in a petri dish scientists can also understand how genetic mutations or specific chemical messages lead to disrupted stem cell functions in various diseases Finally, these discoveries can be applied to direct stem cells to do things that will help patients, which is the ultimate goal of regenerative medicine. In this regard, stem cell research may help us prevent or treat diseases and injuries in two ways, cell-based therapies and pharmaceutical development, which includes drug testing and drug delivery. These are applications within regenerative medicines. Well, sometimes a couple is unable to conceive the natural way. Do you know what type of clinic they might go to so they can increase the chances of getting pregnant? Does anyone know what in vitro means? In vitro means within the glass, which is why people produced by in vitro fertilization are sometimes called test tube babies. This is a picture of uh, multiple sperm digesting the outer cell of the egg in a race for the center sperm use enzymes in their heads and after they get to the egg nucleus the egg prevents any more sperm from entering infertility can stem from many reproductive problems but in one case where there is a problem with the sperm's ability to latch onto and penetrate the egg a couple may choose to have intracytoplasmic sperm injection Intracytoplasmic sperm injection places a sperm right inside the egg nucleus so there is a better chance of insemination. Here is how this procedure works. After ovarian stimulation using hormones between 10 and 30 eggs are removed from the woman's ovaries. Sperm is collected and one sperm is shucked up. On the right side of the picture on the left in holding pipettes secures the egg in place do you see how much bigger the egg is than the sperm what is the amazing is they both contribute the same amount of genetic material to the developing organism the sperm containing the man's half of the genetic contribution is injected into the egg containing the woman's half of the genes this is day one of fertilization as early as 12 hours after fertilization you can see the two bundles of genetic material one from each parent these are called pronuclei by 18 to 20 hours after fertilization these pronuclei fuse combining genetic material from mom and dad what starts out as two cells becomes one cell called the fertilized egg or zygote. On day two, that one cell we call the zygote has divided into two cells. How are they related to each other? They are identical to each other. Later on day two, each of those two cells divides making four identical cells. By day 3, each of those 4 cells divides, making 8 identical cells. Each cell is 1 eighth the size of the original zygote. Some in vitro fertilization clinics choose to implant the embryos back into the uterus at this stage and some wait until the embryo is more developed. On day 4, the cells have divided several times more and are indistinct. How do you think these cells relate to each other? They are still identical. Day 5 is a big day. Now fluid builds up inside the ball of cells making it look hollow like a soccer ball. 
this structure is called a blastocyst are the cells here still identical no they are not the outer layer of the blastocyst is made up of cells that are destined to become the placenta there is a clump of cells sitting inside the blastocyst that is destined to become the fetus however this is definitely not a fetus yes so now the in vitro fertilization doctor chooses a few usually two to three healthy looking five day old blastocyst out of the batch of 10 to 30 blastocysts from the 10 to 30 harvested eggs and implants those into the woman's uterus hopefully one and preferably only one of those will successfully grow into the uterine lining and continue developing into a pregnancy so where are the embryonic stem cells embryonic stem cells make up the little clump inside the blastocyst after the doctor has chosen a few blastocysts to implant do you know what happens to them first the leftover embryos are frozen these can later be used by the couple if the pregnancy is unsuccessful or if they want to have more kids they can be donated to another couple for adoption and the babies born from these successful pregnancies are called snowflake babies as said uh, earlier when a baby is made of the old-fashioned way fertilization happens in the fallopian tube it takes 7 to 14 days for the developing uh, embryo to float down to the uterus and implant when the embryo implants into the uterine uh, the uterine wall the clump now looks like a disc three distinct layers of cells begin to emerge an outer middle and inner layer Cells in these layers are not actually forming mature organs and structures yet but their fate is predetermined and they will eventually become specific parts of the body. What parts of the body do you think the outer layer will eventually form? This layer forms skin and just interestingly the nervous system. What do you think the middle layer will form? It will become the muscles, bones and heart. What will be the inner layer form? it will become the gut lining and internal organs after this the nervous system begins to form the cells in here will eventually form the spinal cord and brain bumps begin to develop near the head end that will be the future neck mouth and nose in the next five weeks part of the embryos will become specialized into primitive organ systems the primitive heart starts beating in week 4 by week 8 what do you what do we have a fetus remember embryonic stem cells used for research are harvested from 5 to 14 days old embryos way before organ formation starts and the consent of donors is always required to use embryos for research purposes